Today's video is a tutorial on this makeup look right here. It's a very retro, so let's jump straight ahead. I'm going to begin by using the Plume Silk Blur Primer to really moisturize my face. This makeup look is very matte, so I'm really prepping my skin really well. I'm also using the e.l.f. setting mist, hydrating setting mist as a primer, and I'm going to let this sit. Next, I'm going to work on the brows. For the brows, it was going to be very bold, but it's also going to be very thin. So I used my Morphe Brow Pomade and I really just filled in my brows. I was not just filling in the sparse areas. I was going front to back because with retro makeup looks, the brows are very bold, but they're also very thin. So avoid overlining and going above, making them look bigger. I just went front to back, filling them in using straight strokes and then I also filled in any of the space between using a spoolie to blend it out. Next, I cleaned up the brows and when you're cleaning up your brows, you want to again focus the product very close to the brow. You almost want to go within the brow hair to hide anything that you possibly can and making it look as thin as possible. I used the Making Bank palette from Morphe. I just feel like I don't use it enough. Picking up the shade Deposit on a fluffy blending brush, I placed it right underneath my brow on my brow bone. This will further help you accentuate the thin brows. Next, I picked up the shade Check Please and Cash or Card and used this as a transition shade. So with the transition shade in this sort of a look, it needs to look very natural. It needs to look like a normal shadow from your eyelid instead of looking like a wash of color. Then I went into the shade price tag. This is a very cool toned brown shade on a very small shader brush from Morphe. And then I used this to give myself a floating crease. You want to use small motions and you use, want to use a very small brush for this. I went front to back building this up very very slowly and also winging it out towards my brow bone. I went into my crease and then I went in with a pencil brush without picking up any product I started blending the shade. Now I did not want to diffuse the shade completely. I just wanted to soften up the edges but the shade needs to be visible as a separate shade in your crease. Next I pick up the shade deposit again on a flat small brush and then I cleaned up my crease. Now at this point you can definitely use some concealer to carve your crease but since I hadn't placed any shadow on the rest of my lid using the eyeshadow straight up worked. Now for the eyeliner this is an crucial and important step for this entire look. I started my eyeliner from the center of my pupil and then I did a very thin line till the very inner corner. Winging it out from where the upper lash line folds upwards, I then started working it inwards towards the center of the eye. Once I was happy with that, I worked on accentuating the shape. Now, since our upper crease is so rounded, I also wanted to add some roundness to the eyeliner. So I used my eyeliner to do exactly that. The shape needs to very Accentuate it needs to make your eyes look like doe eyes so a little bit of roundness in the beginning really helps with that. Tight line your eyes this will accentuate your eyeliner even more. Now for the base as I said earlier it is a very matte base. I was using a lot of matte products it's not a lot of highlighting and shimmer going on even you can see with the eyes it's a very very matte eye no shadow so i went in with the maybelline fit me foundation to give myself a very smooth matte base this is a foundation that my skin can actually handle so i'm using this i also use the same foundation on my under eye to add some color correction i saw a lot of trends with very bright under eyes in this era that I was going for. So I picked up a little bit of my Huda Beauty concealer. This is in the shade Coconut Flakes. And I picked it up on a fluffy eyeshadow blending brush and I started working it from the very inner corner of the under eye. And whatever was remaining, I worked it outwards towards the eye. That, the under eye is the only area that I'm actually highlighting because that is where the most highlighter was focused. Blending out the edges using my foundation brush, I quickly set my entire face with the Huda Beauty powder. 
And then I went ahead with the super bronzer from Revolve or Makeup Revolution, whatever you want to call it. Now, the bronzer placement with this look was very low. I mean, in today's day and age, our bronzer placement has gone even higher than what it was before. But with this look, it was very, very low. It was literally starting from the center of the cheekbone and actually going lower than that. I went ahead and added some bronzer to my forehead and my jawline as well, just to warm up the entire base a little bit. Again, for the blush placement, the placement is again very low. Like in where we place bronzer today, the blush placement was exactly that. So I went ahead and added a fairly good amount of blush onto the apple because pinks and hues were definitely visible through all of the research that I did for this look. And I also worked it up a little bit into the bronzer, but not too much. Now, I did add a highlight, but I added the smallest amount possible onto my face. And it really looked like a glow from within look. All of the looks that I saw had a really bright inner corner. So I did add a lot of highlight to the inner corner. And the lower lash line are actually something very important to this entire look. I added a nude pencil on my lower waterline and then I went ahead with the shade that I used in my crease price tag with the same brush and I started accentuating the lower lash line. In all of the retro looks, whether you go to Marilyn Monroe or who, all of the stars from that era, you see a very accentuated lower lash line. They really bring it down, which gives your eye a more doe-eyed look. And even for the mascara application, you want to use a wand that really helps you get to the base. This wand is from the Lash Sensation Mascara from Maybelline. And this really allows me to get really into the base of the lash and really pull it downwards. And it separates the lashes really well. Accentuating the lower lashes is actually much more important than having an upper lash, to be frankly honest, in this sort of a look. I added a matte lip and a matte fine setting mist and this is the final look. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification. I upload educational makeup videos Monday, Wednesday and Friday and I will see you all there.